Banana slam jam. Oh, this is BSJ back with uh, the same replay. They're the same player that asked for the juggernaut replay. Uh, he just calibrated. He's 2.3k MMR. Uh, playing Draw Ranger. This is uh, not really a hero that's in the meta right now. But uh, nonetheless, at lower brackets, it really doesn't matter too much what you pick. Uh, if you want to get better with a lot more information to learn from, you can pick meta heroes. But otherwise, kind of just do whatever. Uh, Drow, definitely a carry that can't just walk out like you just did. Whenever I play my carry, I think to myself, am I the type of carry that can walk out to the rune and be okay with it? Drow, Morphling, very bad at walking out to the rune first. Because you're such a ranged squishy that if they just go on you, you have to run away. Nice. You take damage for free, and then you, uh, you have exactly what happened there. So that applies to pretty much every ranged hero uh, that's squishy. So far, so good. Blood and a point well taken. And mechanics of CS and good use work, but not much to say about it as of yet. Like, none of it's glaring, you're just kind of mistiming your CS. Other than that, you look pretty good so far. I have to believe you have some sort of MOBA experience. People in my YouTube channel were talking about it. Unless you're just a fucking prodigy. Uh, I wouldn't say boots are very important in this lane. Notice what you're kind of doing. You're kind of just sitting back and right-clicking a lot. Uh, and the only struggle you have is mana as well as how much damage you're doing when right-clicking. So Drow is a carry that I often see, like if she's going treads, she'll buy the Glove of Haste or the Band of Elven Skin first. Um, unless it's a lane you're really afraid of dying. The only reason you buy boots on Drow early is because you're afraid of dying. So, in this lane, I wouldn't really be con too concerned about dying based on how it's going so far. And Wand, I think, is okay, but I would probably prioritize, like, a Bassy or a Sage's Mask. A lot of people tend to go for that. You could even just go a Stick. I don't think it's bad you went Wand, but I do think the boots are unnecessary. Uh... It's just a matter of what components of the treads help you to go first, and it actually tells you a lot about your own knowledge of the game and the hero you're playing uh, to buy the right component of the boots. The Band of Elven Skins, like a little bit of attack speed, a little bit of damage, a little bit of armor. Blade, Glove of Haste is obviously just for heroes that need to have a better animation for CSing, for heroes that do a pretty good amount of innate damage and they just need to hit more often. Uh, it allows you to get denies and CS more, meaning because you can... The interval between your attacks is lower. Um, and then boots are obviously more about positioning. And in this lane, I don't think boots are all that important. Like, if you are if you have boots, you're going to die here no matter what. Oh, no. Like, boots aren't going to save you if you're out of position. Uh, whenever the creep wave is pushing into you and your support's pulling, very important. You just don't walk up like you did. You're just going to die. Very, very textbook death there. Based on equilibrium and not behaving according to where the lane equilibrium is. I think you should have definitely given yourself more regen. Oh, so you're kind of just standing in place right-clicking them a lot. It'd be better to have like a Glove of Haste or a Band of Elven skin here. Gotta be very careful for going those denies as a ranged hero when your own creeps are dead. Be very careful about that. For the same reason that you died earlier. I'd say this is a bit too aggressive posturing. Venge is a pretty weak support. Nice sidestep. I would just be sitting back at max range, hitting them whenever they walk in range, just like you're doing now. I would have consistently been doing this the whole time. I think early on, if he like swashbuckles, and you know it's on cooldown, you can posture like that for like the 12 seconds or whatever that's on cooldown. But if he has swash, you just can't be that positioned. You can't be positioned that aggressively. Definitely need to fly yourself more regen. 
But just notice how you're playing the lane, right? Wouldn't you just rather have more attack speed or more damage? Okay, nice enough to him to give you a tango. Obviously taking you a long time to fly your items out. Uh, just try to get in the habit of checking that. You had plenty of gold either by a Wraith Band or by a Regen. Or by both, actually. Think about what the hero is doing to you in lane. Pango's kind of just poking you down. He's not, like, killing you. He's just only going to kill you once you're low health like this. And that's why you need Regen. So just pay attention to this kind of stuff. Like, what the dynamic of the lane is. Notice how you're just slowly but surely losing health to this hero. I understand you're new to Dota, so it's going to take you time to learn these heroes. But, yeah. Uh, I think it's time for you to immediately start learning to tread switch. The first step of tread switching, in my opinion, is to isolate variables. So that means to pick the same hero over and over again. If you're playing Drow, you should be tread switching whenever you're farming. Uh, she's a great hero to do it on. Obviously, it's not perfect just because she does less damage when her treads are on int. But uh, there's no reason to have this type of mechanic. Just go left undone. Like, you should just fix it. Um... So the first step is to do it while you're farming. The second step to do it is while you're like laning or sticking, like you're using a stick. Uh, so you go on Agi Treads for that. Uh, third step is to change them based on how you feel in the game. So what I mean is if you're farming and you feel very safe, you sit on Agi Treads. If you're farming but you feel like you might be a threat, you sit on Strength Treads. Uh, that's an example of showing your own awareness of the game. Or at least making a guess. It reminds you to think about what your situation in the game is. And then uh, after that you can start thinking about it during fights and stuff. But I think that that's like, you know, 50 to 100 games down the road of tread switching. So. My thanks. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. <laughs> Radiance Middle Tower Fudge doesn't feel like giving you that tire. Oh, nice he does. I'd be very careful now that he's respawning. He's also level 6. You already saw him miss his roll earlier, so I was okay with your aggression. Now you're being a bit out of position. Like, I think they could just kind of go on you if they wanted to. Your, your Avenge is pretty high level, but you're definitely way out of position here. If the opponent just ganks you, you'd die. You'd, yeah. That's just matchup oriented. Uh... This is the dead lane. You're a drow. I wouldn't feel safe here unless I was a hero with magic immunity. Like, I just wouldn't be feeling safe here. Pango, very high kill potential. Kind of just recognizing, like, who you're against and what they do. Uh, I know you don't know matchups all that well yet, but drow, very squishy. I wouldn't feel safe there if I was, like, a troll or a bloodseeker. Like, even a melee hero, I would not feel safe there. It's just the dead lane, right? So on Drow, you're more likely to rotate out. It's basically when you think you're a threat, and Pangolier 6 is very scary for almost every safe laner. Uh, this is crazy. What you're doing on Drow here is beyond nuts. Don't really have to say much more than that. For the most part, unless she has her entire team with her and she has an Aegis, Drow doesn't leave her side of the map. Other than maybe hitting tier 1s. Or top, obviously, because that's the safe part of the map. So, in general, like, you didn't get punished, obviously. You're at the 2k bracket, but... You're sitting at full mana. I think you should be more than willing to pop your E to farm faster. Obviously, I'd like you to swatch, swap your Van Brace to Agility, but I think your rotations are pretty natural right now. Like, you're doing fine with the rotations of farming. Drow is a triangle farming extraordinaire. You see them bottom, so you should feel fine to go top. But you shouldn't exactly feel good. But that's okay. They, they, they have IO, but I guess relocates on cooldown. Things are naturally going to be better for you when you're in the top lane than the bottom lane. 
This is a scary rotation, but it worked out for you, I guess. Be very hesitant to TP to your own dead lane on heroes with no escape. Very hesitant. Not saying to never do it, but I think you'd probably gain him more in your bracket if you just never did it, honestly. I would only really fight in my own safe lane if uh, your team's already killed one person or something, or you just walk there. I don't really think Grove Bow is very good on Drow. I think you should reconsider the Grove Bow. I don't think 100 range is really worth it. I'd rather just have the stats. I'd say it's definitely worth considering a Satanic this game, or just Lifesteal in general. Uh, they have a lot of, like, random damage, and, uh, yikes on taking that. I think Silver Edge is a fine consideration, though. I'd say this is, like, a Silver Edge E-Blade game, though. I actually, now that I think about it, Satanic's bad. I'd say this is a Silver Edge E-Blade game to get rid of the physical damage from Jug. Looks like you did some pretty good kiting there. Notice how fights are way easier to take on that part of the map. I'd say you might even been a bit out of position, but just please notice these trends. I know you watch my videos and stuff. It's just so obvious when you think about it. I'd say your rotations are just very natural right now. What you're doing is just good. I don't have anything to say really. The threat switching could definitely be a big deal. In fights, I'm not going to worry about it. But. Okay. You guys should definitely go hit Roche. This lane just doesn't matter. You have a, you have a storm. I would have immediately gone Roche. You're late, but lanes only matter if the opponent's alive. Long story short. As a hero that can do Roche, you should always have Roche on the back of your mind. So if you want to fight, you should immediately consider: Am I going to Roche? I would honestly say there's no reason for you guys to force this high ground. It kind of boils down to that you guys have a lot of pickoff and a lot of lane shove, but not all that much like survivability sustain when you're walking high ground. And I wouldn't feel good if I was you until I had at least like an E-Blade or a BKB, one of the two, if not both. So you can play this game where you keep bottom and or top and mid pushed in, and then eventually rotate to take that bottom tier two. And then at that point, you've kind of like taken over the entire map. So I think you definitely tried to go high ground a bit too early here. That's just like a timing thing that you'll learn on heroes, but... Uh, heroes like Pango are just very hard to go high ground into. And they don't have a hero that can really survive Storm Spirit if they're alone. So it, what that means is they don't have a hero that can survive like that. It just means that they have to leave the base together. And if they leave the base individually, they'll just die. Uh, notice how they leave base, they just die. So that's why I don't really recommend going high ground. You can just out-farm them. You can control two of the three lanes, and you can kind of dictate which two of those are. So just notice how this natural rotation of bottom is good. I would have even had top lane pushed out once or twice more uh, before doing this, but I think this overall rotation is the very natural thing to do when you're Radiant. So this is good. Kill If they, like, out-farm them, if they step out of base, you kill them. And uh, naturally you win the game that way.
Dota 2 is a very formulaic game. Uh, there's a lot of very similar answers to the same question every single game. It just comes down to when you do it, like what the timings are, what items you need to do it, all that kind of stuff. That's like what shows your understanding of Dota. So to point out like that you can't just go high ground like that, uh, and you should naturally rotate to the bottom half of the map and take their tower, notice how it just worked for you. Uh, but that's something to think about. Like You have to be really strong to make an exception to that rule. Very strong. So at this point, I'd say the game's over. You guys are officially solidified the game. So I'd first off say tread switching. Uh, second off, consider what component of your tread you're going to buy first. It says a lot about your understanding of the laning matchup. Uh, third off, uh, recognizing when your own safe lane gets to the dead lane point. I know you don't know Drow all that well, you're only level 1, but uh, it's just something you can keep thinking about. It, it can do with your hero, it can do with the opponent hero's level 6 power, it can do with like the opponent mid if they're missing or not. It can do with a lot of things. But this game, you definitely overstayed your welcome. I told you you are out of position for like the 2 minutes you were, and then they finally killed you. It's like in my bracket, you'd have to be out of position for 10 seconds and they'd kill you. Notice how good the fights were when you were playing around top. Notice how bad they were when you were bottom. Just continuing to hammer in the dead lane concept. Uh, think about Roche more on heroes like Drow. Just have that be in the back of your mind. Every time you get a kill in lane, think to buy items. Every time you get a kill in the mid game, think about what objectives you can take. Roche being one of them. Um, how do you tell people to not go high ground? Uh, all you can really do is educate. Uh, just say, hey guys, like, Let's uh, control top half of the map, and then take and then like take bottom tier two, and then we can go high ground. If they don't listen to you, so be it. But he definitely instigated going high ground there. And when I say instigated, I mean by being there, he's instigating it. Yeah, I'd say that's about all I can get from that game.